Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Farah, and in today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys about my November hopeful reads or pile of possibilities or books that I'm hoping to maybe get to for the month. Um, so for November, there's a couple different reading challenges or reading events going on that sound pretty fun. And I haven't really gotten into the reading events for a while. I think the last one I did was maybe back in March. I don't know, I feel like it's been a while. Or no, I did the big books of summer. But this time, um, there's three that I'm interested in participating in, and some of the books that I'm gonna talk about have can actually fill all three categories, which is kind of nice. Uh, but anyway, the first one is gonna be an event called Dr. November, which is hosted by Mark from Book Time with Elvis. And it's also co-hosted with Greg from Another Bibliophile Reads. I believe Steve Donahue, um, Jim from Mysteries and Mayhem, or Mystery and Mayhem, and then maybe uh, Randy from The Literate Texan. I'm not positive on Randy, but I think he was, I saw his name in one of the videos. But this is a fun event where all you have to do is just read one book that has to do with espionage or a spy, like some kind of spy thriller. It could be fiction or nonfiction, whatever is interesting to you. And I remember this event from last year, but I didn't participate because I had just started the Read What You Own Challenge and I didn't have any books that I owned that would fall into that category. But this year I definitely wanted to give it a try because there are a couple of books that I've had my eye on that would actually work well for this. Um, so they're going to be doing a group read. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be done through somebody's Discord or through Voxer, um, but I'm sure you know if you look at their videos they'll probably have more information about it. But the group read is going to be um, a book called The Secret Agent by Joseph Conrad, and this was written back in 1906, I think. Um, and the story takes place in the late 1800s. And it follows this um, secret agent, anarchist spy, who gets hired um, along with a couple other people to um, commit an act of terrorism within London for political reasons. So the story just follows that and then what happens to the characters afterwards after the bombing incident occurs. So it sounds pretty interesting. Um, I found the audio for this, so hopefully I'll be able to get to that one. And then the book that I really, really hope to get to as well, which is not part of the group read, it's just something I picked, is a book called The Spy and the Traitor by Ben McIntyre. And I remember hearing about this book from one of the channels that I follow um, called For the Love of Stories. And she's a great booktuber. I always really enjoy her recommendations. I feel like everything that she recommends, if I've read it, I completely agree with her. So I feel like we have very similar tastes. And she absolutely loved this book. So this book, uh, let me just pull up the synopsis because I, I just can't remember. I can't remember at all. So this is a nonfiction spy novel. So it's really interesting to me because it is, supposedly really happened, which is kind of cool. So the synopsis is, on a warm July evening in 1985, a middle-aged man stood on the pavement of a busy avenue in the heart of Moscow, holding a plastic carrier bag. In his gray suit and tie, he looked like any other Soviet citizen. The bag alone was mildly conspicuous, printed with the red logo of Safeway, the British so supermarket. The man was a spy for MI6. A senior KGB officer for more than a decade, he had supplied his British spy masters with a stream of priceless secrets from deep within the Soviet intelligence machine. No spy had done more to damage the KGB. The Safeway bag was a signal to activate his escape plan to be smuggled out of Soviet Russia. So began one of the boldest and most extraordinary episodes in the history of spying. Ben McIntyre reveals a tale of espionage, betrayal, and raw courage that changed the course of the Cold War forever. So yeah, that sounds really good. So I really hope I can get to that one. I did find the audio for that through Hoopla, my library. So that'll be good if I can get to it. The other two books are um, focused more on female spies. So these sound really interesting to me as well. So the first one is called The Alice Network, and this one is historical fiction. And I'll just read you a quick synopsis of this one. And this was inspired by the real Alice Network, which was a group of female spies in so in the Alice Network, this was inspired by the real-life Alice Network, which is was a group of spies in France back during World War I. And it's a dual timeline, so we're following um, an American sociolite back in the aftermath of World War II, and she's looking for her cousin who has disappeared. 
she runs in and we flash back to 1915 during World War One to this renowned female spy named Eve who, you know, their, their stories become tangled up and she probably helps her find her missing cousin. So that, I don't know, it, it's a little bit more beefy than that, but you get the gist of it. So that one sounds really cool as well. And then the final book that I would hope to get to, maybe, maybe not, but it sounds really interesting is called A Woman of No Importance, The Untold Story of the American Spy Who Helped Win World War II by Sonia Purnell. Now this one sounds really good. This is another nonfiction. So my two nonfictions would actually count both for Historathon and Nonfiction November. And this tells a story of Virginia Hall, a Baltimore sociolite. She became the first allied woman deployed behind enemy lines and despite her prosthetic leg, helped to light the flame of the French resistance, revolutionizing secret warfare as we know it. She established vast spy networks throughout France, called weapons and explosives down from the skies, and became a linchpin for the resistance. Even as her face covered wanted posters and a bounty was placed on her head, Virginia refused order after order to evacuate. And this tells about her life and how she escaped, and it just sounds really good. So I hope to get to that one as well. So those are my four picks for Dr. November. Um, please let me know if you guys have read any of them and what you might have thought. And then I have three picks for Historathon, and there's no way I'm going to get to all these, but these would be for both November and December. So last year I started this book called The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee, Native America from 1890 to the Present by David Truer. And I actually did start this last November. Um, I started it on audio and I really was, I loved it. I really loved the writing a lot. So because I wanted to get more out of it than just listening to it, I ended up buying the physical copy and I started to do a read through of it, but I ran out of time, so I set it down. And unfortunately, I hadn't picked it up until now. So this, I really hope to get to for Historathon. It was so good, it's really sad. I mean, I can already tell it's gonna be really sad, but it's just a topic that's always been interesting to me. So hopefully I can get to this one. Um, I also could do this book called Stamped from the Beginning, The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America by Ibram X. Kendi. And this would be a reread. Um, I originally listened to this also on audio a couple years ago and I absolutely loved it. It was really, really good. It was really interesting. So again, I bought the physical copy and I wanted to do a read through it again and just sort of tab and underline and just really kind of savor it. So I have, gotten a little ways through as I've been rereading it, but I thought maybe for Historathon I might skip ahead to the category of quarter four. Uh, I forget the exact date, but it's like 1860 to present, I think. And so if I do have time, I could focus on the sections of W.E.B. Du Bois, du Bois the French, um, and of course the Reconstruction era. Or I could skip ahead and do Angela Davis, which focuses more on the civil rights and it goes up you know, to present day. So that's another option. And then the third option, and you know, I highly doubt I'm gonna get to this, but I just wanna talk about it anyway. But this is The Warmth of Other Suns, The Epic Story of America's Great Migration by Isabel Wilkerson. And this was actually a winner of the Pulitzer Prize for nonfiction and it's just, um, a nonfiction narrative story about the greatest mig migration in American history where I think that took place from 1915 up to 1970 where around six million black Americans migrated up from the south to the northern and western cities of the United States. So this just sounds really interesting. Um, I know it's going to be good. I just like just from skimming through it, I can tell that I'm really going to enjoy it. So if I don't get to it, this historathon, I'll definitely read it at some point. It's been on my list for a while. So other than that, um, I'm still working on my autumn book, my daily nature reading that I enjoy. So I'll be doing the November section for that. And then I think the only other lingering one I will have still is my Stephen King Nightmares and Dreamscapes. I only have about six or seven short stories left in that. So that's, that's a big pile, but hopefully I can get to at least some of those. And yeah, so that's about it. Um, let me know what you guys are hoping to read for November. Um, or if you're just going to go with the flow, don't plan anything out, just completely mood read, which is def which is what I feel like doing. So we'll see how I do with this TBR. But thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you soon. Thank you so much. Take care and thank you.